Good day grade 10s. In this lesson we're going to be learning about the law of conservation of energy and of mechanical energy which are actually slightly different things but let's go through it. First of all the law of conservation of energy says that energy cannot be created or destroyed is merely changed from one form to another. This is quite an amazing concept because if you think about it the energy that was used in the Big Bang is the same energy that allows us to see things because of light or feel warmth because of heat. So energy cannot be created or destroyed, it is merely changed from one form to another. Now more specifically we can talk about the law of conservation of mechanical energy. This states that the total amount of energy in an isolated system remains constant, which means if there's no friction, the total mechanical energy of an object moving in the Earth's gravitational field is constant or conserved. But what is friction? Friction is a force that opposes the motion of an object and therefore we need energy to overcome the friction. So we're saying if there is no friction, mechanical energy is conserved. Mathematically they say the total mechanical energy is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. Therefore Ep plus Ek original, so it's Epi plus Eki, has to equal the final Epf plus Ekf. Right, so let's do an example. Let me get a little pen out here. So it says, Peter drops a ball of mass one kilogram from the top of a building three meters high. So here's a drawing. Terrible building. And there's Peter, stick figure Peter, and he drops a ball. And he drops it from a height of three meters, and the initial velocity is zero. Right, so we know that EP at the top plus EK at the top equals EP at the bottom plus EK at the bottom. Now grade tens, I don't care if you're super smart and you know that some of these don't exist right now because they're actually zero. You need to write this because this line here shows that you know the conservation of mechanical energy and you're using it. Okay, once we've done this we can now fill things in. So at the top we've got MGH plus a half MV squared equals mgh at the bottom plus a half mv squared. There is no kinetic energy at the top because the initial velocity is zero so we can cancel that. So we've got just got mgh equals there is no potential energy at the bottom because we've hit the ground so that goes away and you're left with a half mv squared. Now I want to show you a little trick and that is that, do you see we've been given the mass, the mass is one kilogram, but the mass of the ball here is one kilogram and the mass of the ball over there is one kilogram. So since the masses haven't changed, we can actually divide by both the size by the mass and we're left with GH is equal to half V squared. And the reason I'm showing you this is because a lot of times you get questions in this type of question where the mass is not included and I get students going, we can't do the question, we don't have the mass. You don't need the mass. Look at that. If the mass hasn't changed, if nothing's fallen off or dropped off the object as it goes down, you do not need the mass. So let us now solve for V. So you've got times that by 2, so you've got 2GH is equal to v squared, therefore v is equal to the square root of 2gh. Now the reason I didn't substitute numbers in straight away was because I wanted you to see this because another type of question we can actually ask you to do is we can say derive this, derive that v is equal to the square root of 2gh or show that the velocity is independent of the mass. So now you can see how it's done, it's actually very easy. Right, now let's substitute in our numbers, so we've got 2 times now has 9.8 because that's the gravity on Earth and we assume that Peter's on Earth and we've got the height of 3. So we pop that in our calculator and we go 2 times 9.8 times 3 equals square root it and we get 7, wait, I can find this thing, 7.67 meters per second 
and it's asked for the speed and speed is a scalar so we don't need to give a direction. So that is the answer. See how we can use conservation mechanical energy? Pretty easy. Right, grade tens, I hope that you now understand and will learn the law of conservation of energy and the law of conservation of mechanical energy. And then practice some examples to make sure that you know how to use it. Thank you, grade tens. Have a great day. Thank <music> you.